Well, folks, in today's video, we visit the Armprior train show in Armprior, Ontario. This is a show which comes around once a year on the first weekend of June, and for this year's show, I was able to visit on the Saturday, and I've gotta say, I've never seen this place so busy in my life. There were more people, more vendors, and more displays than I've ever seen, and I ended up having a wonderful time. I met some great people, and I ended up even buying a couple nice things as well. So kick back, relax, grab yourself a coffee, some beverage of choice, and I'll take you all on a tour and show you everything that there was to see here. So this first vendor had a whole bunch of N-Scale freight cars for $5 a piece. They also had some Kato Unitrack and a whole variety of different locomotives. I believe almost all of these were used, however they did appear to be in pretty good shape. The majority of them were made by Atlas, however there was this Concorde piece as well as a Bachmann Northern type steam locomotive from the 80s. Off to the side they had some passenger cars, most of which were by Amtrak. And over in this section it was kind of miscellaneous stuff, the majority of it was North American, but there were also some European pieces in here. There were also some unusual pieces like the circus train and this random Canadian Pacific dummy locomotive which kind of caught my eye. Now the next vendor had a whole bunch of HO scale stuff, and most of this was just your run of the mill, lifelike Tyco and Bachman equipment. However, further over they had a whole bunch of different HO scale project steam locomotives, and many of these were either brass or die cast, and I can tell you what, amongst them all there were some fantastic projects. They also had some complete locomotives which looked to be in pretty good shape, so there was certainly a lot of very tempting deals at this show. A lot of things that I certainly would be very happy to add to my collection. Another vendor had a whole bunch of N-scale stock, everything from freight cars to passenger cars, locomotives, and even a couple buildings. The majority of this stuff was pretty common, but further over, they actually had some HO scale British steam locomotives, and this was something that I certainly was not expecting to find here. A lot of these I suspect were from the late 90s or early 2000s, since they were being sold under the Hornby brand name. However, further over, they also had some vintage Hornby trying stuff, like this steam locomotive and this diesel. They also had this really unusual wind-up locomotive, which I've never seen before. It was one of the more unusual things I've found at a train show. Some of these pieces of rolling stock were pretty nice. I didn't end up buying any of it, but I've got to say, it was really nice getting to see some stuff from across the pond over here at a Canadian train show. Now over here they had a whole bunch of HO scale diesel locomotives and almost all of these appeared to be in nearly brand new condition. They also had some various freight cars from about the 1970s and 80s going for around $4 a piece. But the thing which really caught my eye was a complete Pendolino set which looked to be in pretty much pristine condition. It was something that I certainly thought about buying for quite a while while I was at this show. Out of all the sellers here, this one certainly had the best selection in terms of HO scale locomotives. They had everything from used locomotives to engines which were new in the box and from just about every manufacturer you could imagine. One thing I wasn't expecting to see however was a bunch of ON30 stuff for sale. It's just sort of a niche scale which I find you don't see a whole lot of. Having said that the Dirty 30 ON30 club was here and they had a gorgeous layout with a pretty nice train to go with it. Another not so common scale being sold here was G scale and they had some very niche things like this Canadian National SD70 ACE. Of course there was no shortage of post-war Lionel stuff being sold here as you can see there was just tables full of it. Further over they had a little bit of S scale stuff which I find is another not so common scale so it was really great to see such a variety of different scales. Up here they kind of had some miscellaneous stuff. 
This layout was one I liked because they had a whole bunch of abandoned locomotives and these would have all been runners at some point. Towards the end of the show I find you always have these kind of junk tables popping up with just really random things. This one included some security equipment. Over here there was a whole bunch of different buildings for sale. They had a Kato N scale starter set which was kind of interesting and a few figures and things like that. Anyways, I did end up buying some stuff at this show, so we'll head home and I'll show you everything I decided to buy here. Well, I'm now obviously back home and I ended up having a great time at the train show and I did buy a couple of unique things which I want to show you all, so let's just get into it. The first thing that I bought was a whole bunch of different vehicles and I plan to put this in the parking lot of my Hershey's factory which should be done within the next nine days. We'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, either way we got ourselves a Volkswagen Bug, a Ford Taurus I believe, and a distinctive second gen Dodge Ram. I think that that's going to be a wonderful addition to that factory. So those are the small things. Those were going for I think like two bucks a piece or something. So really not a bad deal for high detailed HO scale vehicles like that. But now what I'm really excited about are the locomotives. The first one we got here is some sort of a 2882 locomotive. I don't know if this is supposed to be powered from the back or if this is supposed to have another set of wheels, but uh, either way, it just looked like a really unique locomotive. As you can see, it uh, certainly needs some work. I don't really know what the deal with it is, but uh, this was going for, I think, $40, maybe 50 bucks. I can't really remember, but uh, for a large locomotive like this, I really didn't think that that was a really bad deal, especially considering it's in Canadian money. So that's the first thing I bought. The second one I bought is a 4664 locomotive. I don't know anything about this. It's clearly not finished. It is missing some parts, but it's all die cast. It looks to be in great shape. I believe it's by Bowser. Um, it just looked like a really unique locomotive and I thought it would make for a fun project. So yeah, I decided to buy that. This right here is the tender. It does contain the motor for that locomotive, but uh, the drive link looks a little bit questionable. It also has a different railroad than what's on the back, so I don't know if this was the original tender or not. It seems a little bit strange. Maybe somebody in the comments will know what the story with that is, but uh, yeah, that was part of the deal. And then the 4664 locomotive came with what looks to be a Union Pacific Big Boy tender, also you know, in similar condition. It's got a brass plate on the bottom. I don't know if that's an addition, but uh, certainly not the original tender. I can tell you it for that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems okay. And then finally, this is the thing I'm most excited about. This is something from Tenshoto, and it's not a project. This one is supposed to be in working condition. I believe it's a, a northern type steam locomotive. Don't quote me on that, but uh, either way, check this thing out. It's from the Great Northern Railway. It is a 484 locomotive and it's got its original tender. It's all painted up beautifully. Uh, it was brass and it's again in working order for 100 bucks. I thought that that seemed like a pretty good deal. So yeah, three new locomotives and some vehicles. Now, why don't we take these locomotives to the track? We'll see if they actually work or not. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of just figure out what exactly we're dealing with here. I guess we'll start off with the River Rossi here again. This whole drive system seems kind of questionable, but let's give it a chance. Maybe we'll be lucky and this thing will just fire right up. I mean, it's undoubtedly going to need some fresh oil and things of that sort, but that's not too big an issue. All right, let's see what happens here. And the motor's spinning up, so uh, technically I guess this thing does run. We just need to find some sort of a linkage to actually hook the two of them up. But yeah, not bad. So that's pretty good for a start. Now let's test out the other one. This right here is a pretty strange locomotive. I mean, we've, we've got a Bowser engine with a River Rossi tender, and it looks to have been modified maybe to work with it. I'm not entirely sure. Nothing so far. I think that this wire probably needs to be uh, attached to this. Yeah, instead, let's just try connecting it up to the track. Hmm. Oh, I heard something. I 
Yeah, there we go. All right, so that has some life in it. I mean, it's certainly not excellent. It's going to need some work. There's definitely a bad connection in there, but this is probably something which has just been sitting for a really long time, so really nothing that bad. And finally, we got this beauty right here. Hopefully this thing will fire up without too much trouble. Something is certainly not right with the front truck. I can already tell that, but let's give it some power. Uh-oh. We appear to have a bit of a short circuit. Oh. Hey, there we go. Just quickly remove the front truck. We'll see if that makes any difference. Something's really funny with that. There's clearly a, a connection or a wire or something that keeps disconnecting because one second it will have complete power and then it will just knock right out. Yeah, it's even starting to pull through a little bit. Maybe it just needs a good cleaning. I don't know, but uh, either way, I'm still happy with my purchase and uh, the other two will make for good projects, I think. Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly had a wonderful time at this year's Arn Prior train show, and uh, I really can't wait to be back next year if they host one. I met a lot of really wonderful people, and some of them even made videos themselves. So for all of those creators, if you want to get a bit of a different perspective of the train show, I'll put them down in the description. Go check them out. I'm sure they'll appreciate seeing you around. As for everybody else, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.